Welcome to the presentation, Building Accessibility Testing into Your Workflow. I'm Nathan Lilly. I'm a Philadelphia native. I grew up in Philly, uh, the Kensington area. I went to NASCOM, uh, the tech school for commercial art. Uh, I was an early adopter of computer art applications. I've used my artistic training to become, to become a software developer for Fortune 100 companies in finance, technology, and media. For the past 20 years, I've been developing applications in a wide variety of technologies. Uh, I'm a UI engineer at Comcast NBC Universal, where I work on the Xfinity Help and Support website. And I'm a member of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals and a certified professional in web accessibility. So, let's pretend that you haven't been hearing about accessibility for the past 10 years in every presentation this weekend. Let's pretend that you're a junior developer who just got out of boot camp and they drilled you with Mongo Express, React, and Node, but that didn't leave very much time for design, usability, and CSS, let alone accessibility. Or let's pretend that you're a mid-level architect and now your manager is knocking on your door because Domino's just got sued because a blind man couldn't order a pizza. And now he wants to know what you're doing to make sure the company isn't exposed. Or let's pretend that you haven't worried about accessibility at all. But now your mother-in-law is losing her sight and now you're wondering how she use the web, her mobile phone, or her common everyday appliances. Accessibility is how developers enable applications to function with assistive technologies or the practice of making things usable in various contexts. A disability exists in the context of the environment. Dyslexia isn't a disability for someone who doesn't need to read. People can't he who can't hear typically see, uh, people who can't hear typically see images just fine and people who can't see typically hear our audio. We say something is accessible when we've confirmed that the features and function in our applications are available to everyone in context. Visual, auditory, motor, cognitive are just some of the disabilities that we need to account for. Accessibility benefits people who are just temporarily dis disabled as well. People who are driving, parents with children, in low light, high noise environments, movies and clubs. Accessibility practices help everyone in every context. So how does accessibility get broken? Accessibility gets broken by making uninformed choices. On a web page that, mean, that means making uninformed choices with JavaScript, CSS, and even HTML. Properly written semantic HTML the building blocks of a web page all by itself is 99% accessible when used properly. By adding visual and interactive changes to standard HTML, something even as simple as changing an element's color can break the web page accessibility for some users. Marketers, designers, and developers can get, get distracted by making sites fun, dynamic, and cutting edge. Often, we're not even aware how our choices make the content of our site harder to perceive, understand, and interact with. Accessibility is broken by people who make something without thinking about the abilities of their users or the context in which their users will be using the things that they make. And there's a lot for a developer to think about. Mobile first, usability first, content first, performance first, search engine optimization, security, maintainability, and accessibility. Just in accessibility alone, a modern developer needs to manage the multiple different types of user abilities and their combinations. Keep in mind all the different coding best practices for accessible websites and be aware of the quirks of different assistive technology applications and devices. It can be a challenge. How do we solve these accessibility issues? We've solved them by being more aware of the individuals who will be using our applications. These are the principles behind the rules that we use to make an application accessible. We want to make sure everything's perceivable. Pardon me. We want to make sure everything's perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. 
The principal uni principles of universal design go beyond software development and are considerations to be made in any form of design and engineering. Everything that you design must provide for equitable use, flexibility in use, simple and intuitive use, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical error, uh, effort, and the size and space for approach and use. In software development, some of these principles can, in some cases, be reduced to simple values or checks that can be done automatically, programmatically with a computer. And that's how automated accessibility testing was born. We can test for the presence or absence of an alt attribute in an image. We can test to see if a button has text that can be read by a screen reader. We can test to make sure that your headlines were used in logical order, and a great many other things. When you're done developing a web page, you can run these extensions, Lighthouse, uh, which is under the Audits tab in the console in Chrome, uh, Wave extension by WebAIM, or the Axe extension by the queue. And you get to see if you accidentally missed anything. Using accessibility and testing extensions is a great idea as long as you remember to do it. But you shouldn't be thinking about accessibility after the fact, just like you shouldn't think about usability or responsive design or security or performance at the end of your development. DeQ released AppScore, which is the application that runs their accessibility testing extension, and it has a lot of great features. It's open source, works on all modern browsers and tools, actively supported, it integrates with your existing functional acceptance automated tests, and it's highly configurable. These are all features that other developers have used to create even more tools. How can we apply this to our workflow? You should be thinking about accessibility from start to finish. Modern developers have created a workflow to help mitigate bugs and work best practices right into the development process. We have standards, linting, code review, unit testing, integration testing. You can build accessibility testing into your workflow, managing it at each step in the process. Often we don't become aware that there's an accessibility issue until we get real user feedback, all the way at the end of the process. But we know in our heart we should be thinking about accessibility from the beginning, in the requirement gathering and user research stages, and all through the process. In software development, the goal should be to stop as many errors as possible before we get before they get committed and before they get checked in, before they even reach QA. We need to consider accessibility as soon as possible in the process. We need to make sure accessibility is a pleasure to remember and a pain to forget. We should be checking for accessibility issues at every step in our workflow. I'm going to focus mainly on the development stage of the process, the linting, coding, unit tests, commits, code reviews, and manual testing, with some reference to some of the other stages. If you're using React, you should be able to implement all of this. Other frameworks may or may not have the same packages available right now. So in the coding stage, linters have become an invaluable, writing code, uh, invaluable in writing code. We can force a team of developers to all adopt a similar coding pattern and best practices. And their code can be checked for compliance as they write it. With some additional linting plugins that utilize Axe Core, we can add accessibility patterns to those checks. For React, we have ESLint plugin JSX Ally, and for Vue, we have ESLint plugin Vue Ally. These plugins will flag accessibility issues in your code. In this image, I'm showing VS Code highlighting the fact that the image element is missing the alt attribute. It shows the error, why it's wrong, and shows the linting rule that will tell you more information about how to fix it. And it does this for a great number of accessibility issues. Linting isn't just for JavaScript anymore. You can lint your CSS too. For accessibility issues caused by CSS rules, you can add the style and accessibility plugin. It only contains about a dozen rules right now. It checks to make sure font sizes are appropriate, the focus outlines haven't been, been disabled, and other features. Your mileage may vary with this, 
Now, this doesn't use Act Score. It's a collection of custom written linting rules, which leads us to advanced linting. As you get more experience with accessibility issues, you can write your own linting plugins for ESLint to pretest for accessibility edge cases. This could be a pattern that you or, you or your accessibility team have discovered is a best practice that you want your teams to always be aware of. In this example here, the ESLint rule on the left is checking that the H1 element has a tab index of negative 1. Here's why that's important. The skip map is a link that allows the user to skip past the navigation to get to the main content. Ordinarily, it's implemented with a simple link and an anchor. However, there's an issue in VoiceOver in Safari on mobile where that doesn't work. You need to use JavaScript to direct the focus to an H1 element. But this linting rule ensures that the H1 has the appropriate attribute with the appropriate value to accept that focus. This is just an example, a sample proof of concept. I would actually write this to be more robust uh, if, you know, if we were uh, in our actual code base. While you're developing and checking your code in the browser, you're already checking your console for JavaScript errors, right? Then you can use this, use a package that will automatically test the code in the browser and throw a warning in the console if it finds anything. React and Vue both have the packages that you can install that use AxeCore. After one of these are properly configured, it'll check the environment to make to whatever environment you prefer it, the errors to appear in, so that it won't appear in production, but it will appear in your local or development environments. It'll then import AxeCore run the axe core code after a set timeout, and then display issues in the console. Uh, this will catch issues that might not be caught in linting. In the web browser, your page is actually rendered. If you had a button in, the React, in React that was using a variable with the text linter, uh, if you had a button in React that was using a variable for the text, the linter will pass that. If the variable was an empty string, it would get flagged here, as you can see in the, the first error in this image. Buttons must have discernible text. If you don't use React Review, that shouldn't stop you from getting accessibility warnings in your console. You can import App Score and plain old JavaScript and write the console logs yourself. Just remember to check your environment, import App Score, and run the code after a set timeout. That will give the page enough time to render so that it can actually see if there are any issues. Um, here's a link to a code pen that I've, code pen that I've written that shows the basic implementation with the, without the environment check if you'd like to see it in action. So you've written your code, but have you written your unit tests? Make sure that your code is covered. If you're using Jest for your unit tests, you can pull in Jest, the Jest Axe package uh, the pros of this are that it works anywhere that you can use Jet, Jest, whether it's vanilla JavaScript or React or any other framework. And it's just a few lines to write it into your tests. The cons are that, are that you have to actually remember to write the tests. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to write the tests for your test to make sure that you're including the accessibility tests. Um, if I figure it out, it'll be added to the package. <laughs> um, so you've written all your code, and now you submit it for review. Uh, have your code reviews performed by a team member with accessibility development experience. Every developer on your team should get ac accessibility development experience. And this could be also be the point where the product owner and design team want to review your work. Uh, Pattern libraries are a great way to share components and progress and get consensus between the project owners, designers, and developers. Storybook comes with colorblindness filters built in, and by using the Storybook add-on for accessibility, we can surface the same accessibility issues if they haven't been fixed yet, so that the entire team can be more aware. Uh, the Storybook add-on works in a number of different frameworks, and you see they're all highlighted in the, the bottom image. So 
React, Vue, Angular, and so on. So here's where it all comes together. Uh, you can prevent the code from being pushed up to your remote if it fails any of your linting rules or unit tests. The code on the right is saying before the code is committed, is committed, check to see if it passes your linting and unit tests, otherwise block it. It also says the code is, says before the code is pushed up to the Git repo, run the unit tests. If you include accessibility testing in your linting and your unit test, then you can block the commits from being pushed. Just a quick note, I'm not a mobile developer, but mobile de developers don't need to be left out of the loop. Um, there are tools out there that utilize uh, AxCore for Android and iOS. So for manual testing, here's a reality check. Just because your site passed your automated accessibility testing doesn't mean it's accessible. It means you've done the minimum to make it accessible. Automated testing tools are only the first step in checking your site for accessibility. They really only find about 25% of actual accessibility issues. There's no way around it. Every component, feature, function, and page must be tested manually. If you don't know what's needed in a basic manual testing setup, I have a repo that presents an overview. You want to be able to create a home page with some accessibility resources that includes offering exam examples, basic screen reader controls and documentation, and accessibility resources. Uh, this is great for when you're in the middle of testing and you want resources close at hand. Uh, create a Mac OS or a Win 10 machine image with your preferred virtual machine for whatever platform you're not actually working on. Add browsers, screen readers, and testing extensions to that virtual machine and to your, um, your work computer. Um, it's actually great to have in your virtual machine to have the home page set for all the browsers that you're using so that as you fire up your virtual machine that you use for accessibility testing, it has as a home page all of your accessibility resources. So it's a quick check and you know exactly which virtual machine you're in. Um, at the very least, for screen readers, you should be using VoiceOver for Mac OS and Safari and NVDA for use with Windows and Firefox. Mac, uh, the VoiceOver comes for free with Mac OS and NVDA is free to download. Uh, when you're working on a component, it only takes a minute to check for keyboard operability and another minute to make sure that a screen reader is reading how you expect it to read. You want to make sure that it's reading the text that you expect and that it's not reading anything that you don't expect. Uh, once you have it set up, then you can fire up your screen reader from time to time from time to time to see how your code interacts with the screen reader. A five minute spot test on a component or section of a site will save you hours of fixing your code when an issue is found by QA. Just like cross-browser testing, you'll want your entire team to agree on what device, browser, and platform combinations need to be tested. So outside of development, you want to get designers involved because designers love getting feedback from coders. Here are a few addi additional things to keep in mind. Find out if your developers, uh, find out if your designers are considering accessibility. If they aren't, then they should. Before work gets to the developers, the di designers should have put the designs through usability, usability testing, accessibility testing, personas should be created that include personas in various accessibility scenarios. Ideally, the designers should be thinking about the accessibility impact of their designs to the users. User research, wireframes, and personas should all include accessibility as a concern, and developers need to be aware of, of these materials created by the designers. As a side note, consider looking at prior art and pre-made accessible components. It's great if you have designers who can get ahead of this and confirm that there are patterns that already exist that match whatever design elements they're creating. 
Go check the standard sites for accessibility development, the Y area authoring practices, and the A11Y projects contain patterns that you can review. Outside of those sites, developers are, are already making and sharing accessible components. There are too many components and too many frameworks that claim to be accessible for me to present them all here. You need to find them and evaluate their suitability yourself. Use the same criteria that you'd use to evaluate any other component that you'd like to use in your code base. Even if you don't use the components, they make a great resource to understand how other people are thinking about accessible patterns. Beyond development, there are a wide variety of tools at the QA level. It's a natural fit. If your company is worried about accessibility at all, then it's likely that you have a QA team and they have a better handle on it than you do. If they do, then learn from, from them. Every QA tester that I've known has dreaded bringing bugs back to the developers. They'll love it if you make their jobs easier. They may already have some best practices figured out and have a manual testing set up that you can pattern your own off of. Work together on this. So, final recommendations, you want to test early at every stage of development. Test often. It's easy to test if there's no re... I should have rewritten that. It's a double negative. So, it's easy to test. If it's easy to test, there's no reason not to test at every stage in development. I can't even parse that. <laughs> um, make it painless to remember. By building these automated features into your code base, it'll make it easier to perform the automated screening at every level. Make it painful to forget. You need to break the build if people aren't coding properly. Accessibility errors should break your build, and failure to meet the accessibility standards is a failure in your code. All of these packages together might seem like overkill, but it's easy to ignore one error that a user complains about in production. It's easy to ignore a single error that popped up in QA. It's easy to ignore an error that pops up in your console. But it's next, next to impossible to ignore an error that's following you around through every stage in your code. This is automated spell checking level of code compliance. A good copywriter shouldn't accept typos. Good developers shouldn't accept code that doesn't pass the basic level of automated testing. If we can't do the bare minimum, we shouldn't be committing that code. Advancements in development are coming at a rapid pace, and high schools, colleges, and code camps are churning out junior developers at an increasing rate. New frameworks and libraries are created every day. At the same time, the industry is screaming out for even more developers who are even marginally competent. The payoff is that this will keep your rookies from making rookie mistakes, at least as far as at least as far as accessibility is concerned. Once you know your code base is clean, you mainly only need to worry about keeping any new code accessible. You can't rely on having one person screening for accessibility on your team. They'll miss things left and right. Everyone on your team needs to be concerned with accessibility and you should be aware of it at every step in your workflow. There's still more work to do. These tools don't exist for every stage and every framework library tool or code base, but now that we're about, now that we've identified where they need to exist, maybe we can get them built. So, resources. On the left are resources where you can learn more about accessibility in general and developing accessible software. There's even a link to a recent screen reader survey from WebAIM that lists the most popular combinations of platform, browser, and screen reader. On the right are some Git repositories that I made to support this presentation. The first is a basic React code base with many of the packages discussed already installed. The second is a manual testing setup recommendation. The third is an inaccessible site where I highlight some of the issues that make the page inaccessible. The goal with that was to make a site that looks okay on the surface, but is riddled with accessibility issues that you can go in and try and fix. Um, so, good luck. Do me a favor. Go out and become the accessibility expert at your company. Get everyone in your company thinking about accessibility. 
implement as many of these packages as you can, and in 10 years' time, I don't want to be giving the same presentation. I'll be posting this presentation to Liberty Slack. Please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or GitHub if you're too shy to ask any questions now. For anyone else who isn't too shy, what questions do you have? Uh, right here. Have you ever integrated Selenium with any of those? Uh, so our QA team on Xfinity Help and Support uses Selenium and Puppeteer. And your accessibility tools are, I guess, integrated? Right? Yes, they're integrated. They're using, um, they used to use Tedin, and now they're using, I believe they're using Axe. Uh, right in the back. A lot of these tools are based on like things that can be automatically checked, right? The axe, uh, the axe tools integrated into the IDE and into the console and stuff. Do uh, yes. you have any recommendations on resources for checks that can't happen automatically that need more manual validation? There are so many. You need to. to you're talking about manual testing. Yes. Yeah. So, so you need to learn how how to how to do it. Um, I actually, so through um, the Q University has a uh, accessibility course that help, helps you take the certification exams from the IIAP. Um, I recommend those. It'll, it'll teach you about things, um, accessibility issues in general, and then specifically for different web development um, items. Right here. Thank you very much.